Good evening, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Uh, so this first video I'm going to make public, um, just to kick off the educational series. Uh, we just launched our Discord. Come join us. You'll see it on the uh, website or on Twitter. There's a public channel and then there's private channels. And in the private channels, I post updates and kind of give, um, you know, TA education. We talk about trading psychology. We track the different markets, track Bitcoin, um, share different ideas. So, um, but yeah, so come over and join us and we'll, um, we'll have some fun. Uh, so this first video is going to be about uh, everything Fibonacci. And I'm going to break it up into several sections, so it's not too much information. But, um, but yeah, so the idea of this video is to leave you with a full enough understanding of Fibonacci concepts, Fibonacci tools and trading view that you can go out and start utilizing them in your trading. Uh, so I'll just say a little bit about what Fibonacci is. Um, Fibonacci, it's a sequence of numbers. It was initially came up with hundreds of years ago to uh, calculate the birthing or population growth of rabbits. Um, so, you know, the idea of the sequence is it's two numbers and then the previous two numbers are added together to make the next one. So it'd be like two, three, then the next number would be five because that's two plus three is five. Then the next number would be eight because three plus five is eight. 13 because five plus eight is 13 and so on and so forth. So that's the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, when you're dealing with Fibonacci retracement tools, these numbers are Fibonacci ratios. And so that's the ratio in between the Fibonacci numbers. So the ratio between eight and 13 or five and eight and so on and so forth. Okay. so. Uh, if you're familiar with TradingView, you'll know that they have different technical tools you can use um, over on this left-hand side. You can hold down or click on these menus and um, you'll see these different tools. So one of the tools is the Fibonacci retracement tool. So it looks like this, these four different bars, and when you drag it out, it creates um, levels. So this tool is the most commonly used tool in, um, in the Fibonacci kind of uh, tool set and there's a bunch of different fib tools that we will eventually get to all of them um, but so starting with Fibonacci retracement this is um, this is kind of how you start to use it so you open up your chart you pull out this tool and you pull it from a low to a high and you always pull this tool from the left to the right okay so so I'm creating a Fibonacci sequence I've clicked the tool I'm clicking a significant low and I'm pulling it up to a significant high. So if we were here, in fact, this would have been the significant high, right? Or the um, the hot, the next high after this low, left to right, the next high. Up. <clears throat> and then if I wanted this high, I'd pull it up to here. So this is low to high. And I'll talk about why you would pull it from maybe this low, or maybe you would look at pulling it from this low later on in the video. But for now, let's just pull it left to right and start going over what these numbers mean. Okay, so. You, you'll see these different numbers and you can go into settings and you will be able to add numbers. You can you know, type in manual numbers, which I'll do. And these numbers are Fibonacci numbers and Fibonacci ratios. And they're the ratios um, between one and zero is a way to think about this. So I'm going to turn on one and I'm going to turn on zero. So this is one. I'll just make this one zero. Okay, so when I pulled left from right here, the one is at the bottom and the zero is at the top. And these are my places I pulled from. When we think about a retracement, the 382, which is a Fibonacci number, is a 38.2% retracement. So we can see that better by coming to the menu. And I change it from values in the level section to percent. So we see a 38.2% retracement, and then we come down further, that's a 61.8% retracement, 78.6% retracement, and 88.6% and a 100% retracement. So these are all important FIB levels. In fact, I'll add one more here. There's tons of FIB levels, but these are the most important ones, and I'll tell you what the most important two are. 0236. Okay, so we have the 0236, or the... 23.6. You can see we're getting interaction with it right there. I didn't even know that was going to happen, but I know that's an important level in the sequence, right? So 236, 382, we have interaction already. Um, 618, 
786, 886, and 100. So this means it's a 23.6% retracement from this high, considering this as the low. This is a 38.2, 61.8, and it's just the retracement. And so that's why you have to pull from left to right, because it wouldn't make sense to call this if I pulled from, now I'll try pulling from right to left. It wouldn't make sense to call this an a 78% retracement between here and here, right? So that's how you know it's backwards, is because how could this be a 78% retracement and this be a 23% retracement? So you always pull left to right. So you always pull left to right, and you but you only pull uh, low to high for support. You pull uh, high to low for resistance, but still left to right. So let's just say I wanted to use this high and this low, still left to right, but high to low, and this would give me my resistance level. So if I was back here in the price action, I'd go low to high, and I'd look for these levels to act as resistance, right? So we, you know, we kind of, I mean, if we come down a uh, lower time frame, we hit the 382, we had a big rejection, you know, across the about 8,000 dollar rejection. We came up, we pushed up to the 61.8, had a rejection, 78.6, had a rejection. So that's just showing you how relevant these levels are, right? Um, we got some consolidation over here, and we eventually broke this high. And again, we can pull it up to here, and we're going to see these levels will still be respected. 38.2, back test of 23.6. So anyways, we're interacting with all these levels, and they're important, but you can pull through so many time frames. The most important FIB levels are going to be your 0618, and you can put on the 065 as a, uh, um, as a golden pocket. 786 is important but uh, it's not one of the most important so we're, we're going to look at the 38.2 and the 65 or 61.8 sorry um, let me turn this one again just so this is clear all right so when we are looking at this ret these retracement levels sorry guys put this on when we're looking at these levels the reason the 38.2 and the 61.8 are so important is because they are inverses of each other, right? So the same distance from here to here, this is 38.2 to the zero. The 61.8 and the 38.2 are inverses of each other. And so I'll talk about this later when I do Elliott waves and um, some of the theory in there, but some of that theory, theory would be if you have a 38.2 retracement, then the next should be a 61.8. Or the idea is a, a shallow retracement on one wave means a deeper retracement on the next wave and vice versa. So these are kind of key levels in a trend. When you're looking, you'll be looking for these 38.2. Look, we have this, you know, I bet if, yeah, take the coronavirus low, move up, we have the 38.2. One other level I would put on is the 0.5. It's not, uh, it's not a Fibonacci number, but it's a key retracement level. So these are your golden, um, or sorry, your global retracement levels. So that's taking this absolute low of this pivot to this high, right? Or sorry, now it's this high. Um, which again, this brings this retracement exactly to the 61.8. So this is, this is actually a theory I don't see talked about a lot, but something I've noticed is you'll put in a low like this, and you put in the 61.8 and it will front run the 61.8 but then we'll make a new high and reject and if you pull up to that high you have the 61.8 hit to the cent so in theory what you could do is if this rally starts happening you could actually just pull this up to an to a blank place on the chart before this high even hit to make this the 61.8 and that would have given you the exact high. Um, there's other ways where this high shows up exactly as well, but this is one of them. And it's it happens quite often that, that when a level's front run, the new high rejects to create, make this the 61.8 of the new high. It's not the proper way or the traditional way to use FIBS, but it is a cool occurrence. So this global pull gives us all the FIB levels in this area of the chart. But there's also some really important levels in this area of the chart, and they're completely different. So this is kind of more of an, it's still high time frame, but intermediary time frame. 
So you'd move your, your fib up and, and you'd get these levels. And you might put them in a folder, right? You might have these levels, you might right click, create group, and say mid, mid time frame. And then you can turn them off, you can turn them on. You might have different levels in there. Um, but then you want to get the relevant fibs for this part of the chart as well. Right? This price action is fractal, so you can use your fibs here. And then you can also, and you don't have to, you can always just pull in your fib. You can delete it, you don't have to fold everything. But you might just want to look and see if you get confluence, which is another idea I'll talk about, where more than one technical idea lines together. Um, it doesn't always have to be the absolute low, but again, you'll see if we come to this pivot low, this was the 382 retracement in this side. We front ran right here. Um, it's that same concept I was talking about where levels get front run. But, um, but anyways, you can also pull from not just the, the absolute low, sometimes you pull from this low or you pull from an impulse low. This is where the impulse started. And these will give you relevant levels too. So it all depends on what area of the chart you're interested in getting inform fib information on. What I like to do for extensions is use the trend based tool, which would be this icon or here, trend based fib extension. And this takes into account three points. So you can take a low, high, low for uh, price um, extension to the upside, and then you could take here we go a high, low, high for price extension to the downside, for downside targets. So you'll see, you know, these levels were very well respected using this area of the chart to create three pulls. Again, high, low, high. That's how I got these levels. I want to be more precise here. Um, you can also, if you hold control in trading view, it'll snap price to that, the wick or the candle body so if you want to get really precise you can do it that way so that's this is important you always use this tool left to right as well so you take a significant low significant high and significant low left to right you would never pull back to an old low after the high it always needs to be in order so it always needs to go low high low and you would never do a pull that's like low high and then back to this low you'd always use a low following this high and it so it takes a little bit of experience to kind of identify what the significant lows are here like if i wanted to look at this price action i mean i would say this is significant to start the impulse this absolute low is significant this is significant because this looks like a wave one retracement uh, did you ask me? Um, you know, anytime there's an impulse, significant, significant. N now, this was significant, but it was made insignificant by this price action wiping it out. And this became a significant low, and even this impulse is a significant low. Uh, if you work your way up, you know, you would look at these levels. Significant highs are a little easier to spot on in an uptrend because they're just the highest points. Um, you would never pull a FIB retracement with this high to low. Oh, I'm not even on retracements anymore. Let's just delete these. Interesting. They are not deleting. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Just turn these off. Um, you would never pull from this high to this low because it's been invalidated or made less relevant or irrelevant by this high. So, you know, you're taking this high to this low. This is the section of the price action. We can't really pull resistance. There's no point in pulling it here, right? Because now we're pulling under current price action. So resistance would always take into account like here to here to see where price is coming up. Um, you know, if we got granular with price action, we started looking at resistance. I'll, I'll share this kind of stuff 
more in, in price action videos. Um, but you're kind of looking for looking for reactions. So you know we did get a big reaction off of theory two. This was a 10% rejection. You see we consolidate under it and we push up through it. And so you start examining price action closer. In the four hour time frame, you see we pushed through and now we back tested it. We held, we rallied up to the next level. And I go to the one hour chart here and I'm sure we'll see even more interaction with this push through. Right. So yeah, you can see we can start consolidating and we found this way too. We flipped it from resistance to support and then we rally up to the next target. We reject off, reject off the 618 almost exactly. These aren't, you know, it's not like we went back down to zero dollars, but a 10% rejection is it's pretty big. We pull up, okay, we, we're testing these levels, and we finally push up to the top of the golden pocket, which I don't have turned on, and then we have that big rejection, that big liquidation. A lot of people get trapped up here, so they're longing when we're hitting resistance. They're longing the quote unquote breakout, but what they're really longing is high time frame resistance, where we're probably going to have a uh, retracement. Um, okay, so I think I think that covers everything that I want to do in this first section on, on Fibonacci retracements. It's just a basic video um, explaining how you would use the tool, what, what you start to um, look for. And then in the future, we'll get into things like fib circles and, and um, things like this. I'll just show you this, like a fib circle. There's different ways to pull it. I kind of have um, some methods that I've kind of discovered that you could go high to high here. And you see it kind of creates like this ripple effect. Um, in the price action, um, and you can even do something like this. Look, low to low, this low to pivot low, and it almost creates like a 3D um, illusion where you can kind of see price interacting with these levels. So this is, you know, <laughs> this is cool stuff. Fibonacci goes way beyond just retracements. Um, you know, you have fib time and all of that, but I want to. Uh, I want to take it slow, you know, do one video at a time, we'll get through this. I'm going to develop some um, PDF material for our members on the website and uh, they can, you know, use that as sort of a reference or some notes to um, go back to on these, uh, on these topics. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll get after it again tomorrow.